Ladies and gentlemen, um, welcome to, welcome back, I should say. Welcome back to Influence Hour. They showed me for a quick second without my hat. That was kind of weird. I don't know how that happened. Um, so usually they let me see, boom, that's what I wanted to see. Now I can start the show, relax. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to, to Influence Hour. I wanted to be early today. I started 25 seconds early. I said they deserve that. This, is, this episode is called Glass. Um, we're here doing another, another quarantine, another quarantine banger. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm supposed to, a guest today, Shokari Nakapodia. Um, super duper awesome. I'm your host, Kinyo. Uh, it's K-I-N-Y-O. Um, and uh, yeah, you can if you want to check me out. It's pretty easy to find me. Kinyo.org. Kinyo.org. Um, yes, yeah, so definitely go get more things from Kinyo.org. It's really cool to be back. Like when I'm live, I'm very happy. You know, I don't actually enjoy doing live streams. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't like it because it's a lot of energy. But when I am live, I'm happy because I'm recording. I'm not just talking to to whoever's gonna watch this video, but I'm talking to whoever's gonna watch this video. Isn't that pretty cool? It's you, it's whoever. I don't know, I love it. Um, and it and gives me a chance to be like, okay, what is going on? You know, new things come to mind, I get inspired. Um, I get more, I'll, I'll be more inspired when I have actual people like commenting live. Um, the camera's looking really good today, so I'm like, I'm just chilling. I'm like, should I just chill like this for a little while? I feel like I could just hang out. Yeah. Um, but you know what? My guest is here. My guest is here. So I was going to do intros. Go check out projectforward.tv. Go check out Um, But I'm going to have my guest come in because this is what Influencer Hour is all about. It's about the guest. Um, and this, this person is a prolific business person, um, a leader, a visionary. And so uh, it's my pleasure to welcome to you um, the founder of Dream Week um, in San Antonio, one of the, the, the largest, which culminates in the largest Martin Luther King March in the country. No, no, okay, I'm making him wait. That's ridiculous. Let's do this. Sir, welcome. I see the name, I hear audio, oh. and now I have video. Wow, this is such a pleasure. This is awesome. Welcome to Influence Hour, everybody. Round of applause. Uh, show Nakpodia, sir. It's a pleasure to have you. How are you doing? Hi, Kenyo. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. good. Good to see your face. It's been a while. Yes. Oh man, it's been a while since I've seen lots of faces. But uh, yeah. how are you? Holding up, holding up. You know, just want to get this year done with. You know. Yeah, yeah. And Does it feel up. weird? It feels. I was thinking about the fact that the year's ending, right? Such a weird year is ending, and yeah. you know, you think about something being on pause, which it feels like a lot of things have been on pause. But then at the same time, something's ending. And I just started feeling that sort of conflict there where I'm like, hey, do, even though you thought things were on pause, whatever was on pause, it's still wrapping up. Um, so obviously stuff was still happening. Um, how are you feeling about the ending of the year? Are you, are you, you're very hopeful for, I'm sure you're hopeful for next year, but. Yeah, definitely. I, I think it's important. I think it's important for people to just, all of us just get to the finish line and say, hey, you know, we survived 2020. And uh, I think that's just an important statement to make and look back on it and, you know, just think about all the things that happened. Um, it was a great time to meditate, to have, you know, alone time, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and just kind of, um, you know, just figure out what next. 
So I, I think there are a lot of people out there who just can't wait to, you know, showcase what they've come up with. And this was a yeah. year, of, this is year of ideas or just kind of hatching ideas, I think. Yes, definitely, definitely. I think it's been a great incubation period. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's the word. You know, I, I want to, um, I want to, I want to make sure I'm doing a very good introduction with you and with Dream Week and learn, learn and hear it from you because I, I haven't heard you explain it. How did um, give us the? I'm sure you're skilled at this because you know you're 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 a framer of communication. Give us the the the, the timeline, um, the the show Nakpodia Shokari Nakpodia timeline from kind of maybe your early, some kind of early impetus to where everything you're doing and then, um, you know, Dream Week, um, how, that, how that connected. Well, so, you know, um, actually I'm very curious, just one quick question and I promise I won't ask you another one. No, that's fine. Your, your first name, what's your entire name? Yeah, so my whole name is yeah. Olu Busola. Olu uh, Busola. Yes, you said it correctly. I say okay. it, it correctly my whole life. It's true. Okay. Uh, Olu, Olu, Olu. Yeah, and then my middle name is Morakio. Morakio. So that's where I get the Kenyo from. Yeah, and oh, Morakio. It's a beautiful yeah. name. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. wow, Morakio. Okay, excellent. I was just curious. Oh, because I trying <laughs> to figure out where, what section of it, you know, I knew it was some yeah. portion of a sleeve of a name, but yes. I didn't know particularly what it was. Yeah, like Morakio. It, yeah. so you could have been called Ayo, you could have been called Aki, you could have been called yeah. uh, Moyo, all yeah. kinds of, yeah. You know, everyone just, my family called me Bus, because I mean, Busola, <laughs> Busola Bus, yeah, was, bus, yeah. you know, and then, yeah. and then, yeah, it was all first name stuff. And then I was like, hey, my middle name is really cool. And then someone told me what it meant. Yeah, um, yeah. I've seen the warrior. Well, I heard that. Is that correct? Does that map? Ayo is joy. Okay. So, no, um, Morakio. Morakio is uh, Aki is like yeah, warrior. The you know, but you you yeah. you you you. It's kind of a joy with uh, leadership or joy with. Okay. Power, yeah, something like that. What did I what, what, to warrior and I was like I like that. It was it was yeah. it was good for where I was at in my twenties and I, I latched onto it. So. But yeah. you you you, but, you leave you live up to your name, so you're good. So the, I the, the reason yeah, the reason I ask is my name is Shokari. Right. Nakpodia, and everyone calls me Sho, of course, but so I was born in Lagos, Nigeria, and mm -hmm. um, I lived in Lagos. I lived in Lagos, went to school, boarding school, like a lot of, you know, uh, Nigerians my age, and uh, went to England and, and wanted to be a writer, ended up in New York, had a sister who lived in San Antonio, came to visit her, like fell in love with the city, and I thought it was an excellent place to, as a kind of a creative to maybe just settle down and chill and try and, you know, develop a, my own voice. And that's how I ended up here. So, so that was a quick, quick, quick uh, take. But um, ultimately, uh, I, we, I started an agency here called The Mighty Group and started it uh, almost 20 years ago. And we grew and uh, ran about 2010. We had the opportunity to beautify the MLK route, uh, MLK March route. And, um, and I thought to myself then um, that, wow, this is, you know, I've been to the March before, but I'd never really spent enough time being spent, you know, almost all, staying all, up all night working on the route, seeing people come, masses, hundreds of thousands. And I just imagined the number of people who couldn't, you know, who had their hearts in the right place, but wouldn't, couldn't be bothered to wake up in the morning and march, but you know, they were still, you know, and the fact that how can uh, a market like San Antonio have such a incredible asset? Uh, how did that, how did it develop? And so that's really what the beginning of Dream Week was. The Dream Week was originally a question of, how we in San Antonio, how did we create such a wonderful uh, emblem really to what our, our connections within our community was. Right. And 
I started to encourage a lot of different people to host events and uh, supporting this thing called Dream Week. And nobody said no at, at the beginning. That was like almost like nine years ago. And so this, this is, has grown. We had 220 events last year, but it's really not even been pushed I, I, because I, I don't have all the resources I need to really take it on a level. But we have something exceptional here as a community. I just happened to be the one who had the opportunity to kind of open the, wind, uh, open the door really, but there's a lot going on in here. And it's, it's kind of a very interesting way. San Antonio is not a market facing street um, level environment. You really have to knock on doors, open doors, get to meet people, connect, right. and, you know, and that's, I think what make, gives it that, uh, that edge, I think, over other cities in, in this regard. We have to, you can't, you have to learn to live with others here. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so that, that oh, I love that. So you kind of found that as the, the answer to that question, you know, the, the ways in which San Antonio connects, um, the yeah. answer being, it is very one-to-one. -one. Yes. It is very yeah. intimate. Yes. Yeah. So I, describe, you, I, I describe it more as a buffet. If you want, like, you know, uh, if you, uh, you know, if you want a kind of the a la carte type of, you know, you, the Austins and the New Yorks and places like that were appealed, but here uh, you have to customize your own experiences much. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't come, it doesn't come to you. Right. That's as great. That's right. Because those paths aren't as deeply treaded. Okay. I could go on on this forever okay. and okay, I, okay. That I get to do that um, some other time. But we're gonna go into the, the three rapid fire questions that I hope keep okay. this show exciting and engaging for the viewer. Um, right. So in the past four years, um, you know, taking into account everything that's going in now, what have been some of the major growth periods? Um, this is question number one, some of the major growth periods for you um, in general? In the last four years, uh, whew, that's a tough one because I've been working on. Yeah, very tough. Years. I've been working. Yeah, I've been working on. You know, I've been, you know, you. I think, I think most creative people or creative people working in the creative uh, field work on themselves constantly. Um, but I, I, I just for personal reasons, you know, I've had to kind of be spend a lot more time with myself. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but. Um, I just realized that I needed, I, I wasn't spending enough time, you know, just, uh, I think some people might think refueling or recharging, but I really sort of learning, relearning a lot of different things. I didn't, I hadn't spent enough time. So for example, I don't own a television. Um, this, what I'm doing right now is rare. Right. I try not to even read as much but just kind of just spend a lot of time just really um, in meditation. And that has really, that's been something that has really helped. The other thing that I realized is too, that this is probably the third, second, I think, second um, uh, meeting. And, um, and generally, you know, I mean, I, I, I think you're an excellent person. Uh, I love your spirit. I just love what you do around the community. We haven't really connected as well as I would love, but uh, I get people that ask me to do this and do that. And I realize that no matter how you feel, your one's idea of success is not necessarily, um, you know, it's not necessarily um, the perception others have of you, you know, you know, you can't, you can't, I don't have a really good gauge on either. So I just, I'm just, I am, I'm, I'm just, I don't try to be any longer and try not to be anymore. Just, 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 you know, just be myself. And for some reason that translates to a lot of people like success and I've learned to start to accept it. That's really interesting to me. Okay. Uh, to kind of follow up that, that leads into the next question. What, excites you about what's coming up and you know the last interview I did um I kind of reframed it and I said um what would be the most exciting projection of what it is that you're trying to do and that ties into me kind of what you were talking yeah. about you know there is ambition and I was thinking about ambition earlier today too as a, as a very interesting concept and what we use 
ambition to like satisfy in our everyday lives. Looking through the, um, the window of, of ambition becomes a daily practice and it shapes the way in which we actually interact with our you know, everyday life, even though it's a far off thing. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of curious, I was gonna ask, you know, what was it that you were trying to um, you know, go for, but I'm more interested, I'm gonna carry it straight into the next question in what, what excites you about what you think is coming? Well, okay, so, uh, <laughs> so I have a lot of, I mean, my, a lot of people who are very close to me would, uh, you know, we, I, we generally have a lot of discussions and some, of, some people might consider them somewhat philosophical, but I really, I really think that right now we have struggling as, you know, at least, you know, within America with language and how to express, how we can express this uh, language that of truth that kind of supports what we are all feeling, some commonality, right? So when you have the idea woman, for example, um, not, you know, or, you know, the idea man, it's, you know, it's in, it's in play that we, people say, no, this is what women should be. And another group says, no, the, the idea woman should be this. And another group will say, you know, it should be more fluid than that. It can be one thing or the other. You start to have arguments about language. And I'm fortunate to have um, a background with certain other languages, whether it's my, I'm not, I'm not Yoruba like uh, your 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 uh, family probably are, but Urobo and Shekri that I come from, you just you can't change the language. There's nothing to you can't, you know, it's, you don't tweak it. You just have to learn it, and so it's quite a fascinating for me. So when you when you ask that kind of question, I see more. I see people becoming a lot more true about how they express themselves. And for that reason, we have to be uncomfortable with the language we've been using to describe our own existence because it's not, it doesn't fit quite well as well. And so that is what, to me, what Dream Week is, is that if people can be honest enough, and it's part of their ambitions as well, but talk about what their true dreams are. Right. Um, and we allow an environment where there's, you know, you just allow people to express themselves. That is when we discover the genius that exists within us. And it doesn't all necessarily appear at once, but you never know where that next genius is going to come from. You don't know where the next Malala is going to come from, where the next MLK is going to come from. It could come from any voice. It could be, you know, a 12 year old uh, girl on the South side and um, on the, West Side, you know, it could be a, you know a, dude, a, a young boy on the East Side. You just don't know where it is. You have to just allow it, and so it's that. But once we decide that one cannot express themselves, we can only express them ourselves within these parameters. I think we suffer, and I think what that's what we have to. That's what I'm hopeful that we're going to overcome. But I think it's going to be a real interesting conflict because it's a real battle right now for this idea of what the new language is going to be. Wow, that, um, uh, that, that was powerful. And I think, um, you know, you, you had said earlier that you had just happened to be, you know, the one to run with the idea. But I think truly, you know, um, the reason why you were able to, 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 to push this is because um, of your focus on that idea of people expressing their dreams that focus as a singular focus is so amazing. I wonder how you look at um, what's going on as far as the you know, uh, national conversation and how you feel. As a poet, you know, for me, I, I, I sometimes hesitate and I'm choosing now the actions that I wanna take because I'm like, right. okay, well, this is what I actually wanna do. Um, but I sometimes struggle with the fact that I look at everything and I'm like, yeah. I see a lot of people not knowing how to say what they want to say. And um, I, I see a lot of miscommunication, rampant. rampant. Yes, yes, that's, that's uh, our biggest problem. <laughs> right. So, so how, how are you, how, how do you look at that? And do you, how do you fit Dream Week maybe into that? But how do you look at that? Well, okay, so if we can take things at a time, I think sometimes we tend to, I don't want to be oversimplistic about this and say, 
uh, look, um, we, uh, you know, I think sometimes we just avoid our neighbors and then, you know, have this, have a longing for a relationship that is, you know, miles, metaphorically miles and miles away. So I think every connection, everyone you connect with on a day-to-day -day basis, for some reason that is, I think, spiritually that is meant to happen. And you have to engage each person as they could be necessarily. And even if you don't believe in God, but just find that divinity in every single person that you come across. And you, the day slows down and then all this wonderful, um, all these wonderful things start to happen. So as, as a person, I can spend days just talking to you. Right. Because I can only learn. Because I can never be you. And as long as you're truthful, and we're both truthful, now we just impact our lives because you would be giving me so much information about being this other person that could never be, that is true. And I don't have to leave those experiences, but I can, I can, and that is what we need. If we can just figure out a way to be, to not deny people that option to just be, uh, be, uh, be divine you know, in that sense, you know, and say, I'm going to trust, trust that I'm not going to be judgmental, share what your experience as a human being is. It's, wow. it's, not, it's not really that difficult. <clears throat> okay, super awesome. I wanna, I'm gonna wrap up the second question because I'm, I'm just, okay. I'm loving it. And I think one more, one more follow-up question is appropriate. Um, I'm thinking about, um, what you said about people expressing their dreams again, and then you being excited to see the unfolding of that happening in different ways. And I was thinking earlier today about the um, Martin Luther King speech. And I was thinking about, you know, just the purity of him telling a group of people, you know, yeah. I have one of his one of his speeches, you know, I've seen the mountaintop, you know, yeah. and then the line where, you know, little black boys and, and little, you know, uh, white boys, I don't remember the exact, but, you yeah. know, um, the, the kid, uh, kids of different races being able to play with each other. And I'm like, the yeah. purity of him saying that he's seeing this reality. And truthfully, I actually thought that races would, um, not not even races, just, just in general narratives around it would be um, diluted over time just by... Yeah. It's not growing up in that in that universe, but now I'm seeing media is interesting because we're archiving a lot of stuff, and so people yeah. are growing up into these conversations in a way that I didn't think was really going to happen to the same extent. Um, so I just wonder, um, as far as those things playing out, how does that? How, how do you see that playing out in a in a global way where where these um, the conversations around our dreams and our connectivity becomes a platform in and of itself. Do you, even with Facebook, do you see maybe do you, cause I know dream week is a, is, a, is an amazing, is an amazing thing. Um, and to see it played out with events, you know, like you said, you over 200 events and it is so San Antonio, you know, San Antonio has right. these here, you know, just like, yeah. You know, the spurs there's almost like a connection there where it's just like there's this strong current of just straightness yeah. Yeah. And, a, and a dismissal of anything else yeah yeah um, yeah yeah so yeah i'm just wondering how you see this because i know it's it's a great it's a great you know you're creating this whole like dome for two weeks almost over the yeah. city where it's like this i don't know it's just great it's, it's this great expressive you know i'm sure it's kind of like how people enjoy other um like the World's Fair or something like that. Right. But uh, how do you see that going with media? You know, do, 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 is there going to be a Dream Week social media, maybe a Dream Week? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, it's a good, it's a really good question because you know, half, of, half of, before Dream Week started, I thought about it for about a year and a half or so. And so Dream Week is easy for me because, uh, for example, you know, I'm just talking about Dream Week now, and you mentioned it earlier. For a lot of people, they they have to maybe research or talk, you know, figure out things. But because I kind of believe that Dream Week, in a in a one sentence, is really trying to get everyone to it. 
you know, let me let me just say it because it, uh, let me articulate it as best as I can. Um, we were having a discussion once, and a friend of mine said that heaven will be every single person who's ever lived watching every other person's life. We <laughs> all have to watch each other's lives from the you know till the part to the die. You know, and we get to watch each other's lives. You know, and I was thinking, <laughs> wow, that's interesting in yeah. itself. But some people might find that. I can't think of anything more boring than to actually watch the lives of every single person. And some people might think, wow, that might, that would be, ex that would be incredibly exciting. Right. And to me, I, I think that ultimately that would just start to realize that they just, they just, they just all describe what your experiences are. They're just more full, just more detailed. I don't think it's that different. So when you talk about a global um, world, I'm thinking when we talk about Black Lives Matter, for example, and you have people in Tibet with signs saying Black Lives Matter, and there's no one remotely of you know of the dark dark hue there. You start to understand that maybe black, in a sense, is not necessarily uh, just reduced to the skin color any longer, and it becomes a this mental state, right, that we we all share. My issue is when we talk about African and when we talk about both of us, maybe you you um, um, American, but maybe your your um, your parents or grandparents were Nigerian. Again, my grand my grandmother, for example, didn't understand the concept Nigeria. That would have been very strange to her. The idea of her being black would have been strange too. She only considered white people white, but she wasn't black, she was normal. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, so the idea, and so when we talk about black here and it becomes this one thing, it's uh, a little, a little to me, a little troubling. I think that when you, um, I think it's important to, as an abbreviation and a shortcut to get to where we are, um, for now, probably works and has worked for a while. But I remember even as a child, first time I heard I'm black and proud, I didn't really understand why anyone would think, say that because that's what everybody around me was. You know, <laughs> they, we didn't have, there weren't any options. It wasn't like you could pick one and say, I'd rather have that or not. So I think we have to be, I'm hoping that the language and the uh, dreams will make us more discriminating. And that's what I'm trying to get at. Mm, Rather than yeah. say Nigerian or black or so, we get to know this individual and let that be the defining, uh, let the, the, the content of their character as, as MLK says, be the defining uh, feature. And then maybe we'll find something between can you and show and you go, you know what? There's something Nigerian about you and I figured it out, but only because you figured you spent enough time with both of us to figure out some commonality that maybe we don't even identify ourselves. We have to understand that Europeans, the kind of, the, the, the kind of discrimination we afford Europeans when we say the French, the Germans and stuff, will give Africans when we say Ghanaian or Nigerian or uh, you know, is the same sort of sensibility. We are very different. In fact, within Nigeria, the Yorubas are very different from the Igbos. They're two different, you know, groups. And, we, you know, uh, being in the same country has kind of, you know, uh, refined some of the edges. And so, um, you know, it's not as, uh, it's not as clear cut and there's a lot of intermarriage, but Yorubas are Yorubas and Igbos are Igbos, you know. I, and the average Nigerian will be able to tell if you're Yoruba or Igbo, you know, just by even just looking at you in some cases. So I, I feel that as black folks, we have to be conscious of the fact that, you know, it's not just one thing. And I, 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 think, I, I think that would help the rest of the world understand themselves as well and not just see this other thing, but see a lot of other things. <laughs> You know? Yeah, and I, I think that's exactly what Dreamwick is doing, you know, by creating this, you know, and I'm thinking about my experiences with Dreamwick because, um, you know, I, to me, it was, it was funny that you say buffet. That's what Dreamwick to me was. I was like, this is like yeah. just 
this is amazing. Right. <laughs> and yeah. So set up, you know, like this amazing contextual, um, you know, series of, you know, when I think about it is it's definition via almost like a library of lives because you just yeah. get to be person, impactful person. And that's the problem almost with San Antonio. It's like yeah. everybody's Tim Duncan. You just have yeah. like everyone who's yes. doing yes. a yeah. version of this amazingly deep, um, you yeah. know, perspective of, you know, like cultural yeah. So it's just like, and they're folks. And, you, and they're can folks. you imagine how many they are? <laughs> they are thousands. We could have a thousands. Everyone right. is like that. Literally and every human less, being is like that. At least, at least a thousand. Yes. Yeah. Literally any human being, any human being that is kind of can, you know, spend enough time uh, a lot, you know, an adult, you know, has something to share. Every human being. Right. As right. long as they have the right platform. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And you need so many in San Antonio. I wonder. Yeah. So anyway, I'm excited. I mean, I'm very excited. So I, I have the, the main wrap up question for the for the show. OK, this is the hitter. Um, what was your favorite product that you purchased in the last 24 hours? 24? I hardly ever purchase any. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't spent a dime this in the last 24 hours. Okay, see, I, I knew eventually this would happen that I was going to get to a tier of people who actually plan out their life because not everyone spends money every day. But there's... there's no, I, but I, let, me, let me think. Let me think really. 24 hours. So that would have been from last night. But technically, you could include subscriptions if you're subscribed to anything. That's that's a cool well. Idea. I mean, I run a business, so the people taking money out of my account. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if that counts. <laughs> but anyway, those, my those account, are, my account didn't look company. like that last night. I'll tell you that <laughs> something happened to it. <laughs> Things happened. Right. Uh, but in terms of being uh, intentional and spending money, I, I looked online because you know I have I have to children and uh, you know they're growing up now so i have to think about what i have to buy them for christmas but i didn't actually hit the purchase uh, <laughs> uh okay, that so. I mean, we could throw that in there unless unless you have something you know what well i'm gonna hold the christmas well, I, I, let, I, let me think I, i'm surprised you asked that question now let right. me tell you something right i have a i have a number do you have a number that just chases you around um sometimes i'm very elusive to them because i don't like i don't want anything don't like that you know yeah, yeah 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 I, I, this number this number i've chased this number has just chased me around for a long long time long yeah. time 30 years maybe to the point where i know you know in, I, I don't know my, my eyes are just can't figure it out so maybe it's just me just being able to find it but yeah it's 277 Okay. And so I'm, I'm driving past the this huge billboard going home, and it says 277 is the lottery or some, I don't play this thing, so some, yeah. some <laughs> loto thing. And I'm thinking, oh, this might be the big one. <laughs> so, so I might be buying, I might be buying something tomorrow morning, put it that way. Okay. So that's basically the purchase. Oh. I, I was thinking, I, I'm thinking about stopping to buy a ticket. I don't even know how much they are. I've never, <laughs> I, you know, I have no idea. I, I don't even know when I win. Who to, I probably have to call you and say go catch, <laughs> go catch it for me or something. I have no idea how this works. I, I think there's an obvious. Is, I've heard there's yeah. an obvious. You take it there and they give you a portion of it. Obviously, you don't get all of it. But yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that was that was it. That was it. On it's one end and the Christmas gifts on the other end. You know, yes. I almost feel like there's a, a chain in, in there. Holidays are so interesting. But anyway, okay, I, I love it. Thank you so much, um, sir. Thank you, oh, man. Enjoy um, it tremendously. I know you're doing And I want, I'd love you to be part of Dream Week. You need to do a Dream yeah. Week version of this show. I do. I do. You know, my I when I first started the show, one of the first events that I did was a Dream Week event. So I was part of right, that right. 16, I mean, maybe. But yes, you know what? You're right. I do need to. Um, I need I think to. This is, this is fantastic. If you can, yeah. if you can push it, we can talk about it offline. And uh, yeah. um, you know, we have ten days. If a couple of them, uh, maybe you know, I'm gonna do a whole bunch. I think I want to do multiple Dream Week shows. So yeah, that'll be awesome. Gonna, that'll be I'm, awesome. I'm gonna think about it. I was thinking about. It, I was like, I want to like run a little like sideline commentary for Dream Week. Yeah. Because... I'm always interested. We have just this Dream Week. The highlight of this Dream Week is that we have the. Uh, the descendant series. So we have descendants of, you know, original Africans that came here. Uh, uh, 
to uh, slavery. We have uh, Native Americans and we have, um, you know, the, 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 the children of the soil, um, you know, uh, Mexic the Mexican, uh, uh, when this was Mexico as well. So we're trying to highlight what their experiences are because in a way the country came to, the, country, the nation, although they're not uh, immigrants, there's, 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 a, um, uh, there's that juxtaposition of what this idea America is to what they had experienced prior to, it's something that is foreign to them in a sense as well. And we need to have that discussion. So we're going to have a series of those, but I would love you to be an MC or, uh, or host a series that deals with your, uh, the, the people that you come in contact with mostly, uh, the poets. Why don't you have poets, not rather than, you know, talk about, you know, because a lot of poets are so intuitive and so, um, uh, it'd be nice to just listen to, you know, uh, sessions like this, just talking to poets, but not necessarily reading poetry, just talking about their lives and how, where they get their inspiration from. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be cool, that would be cool. I, I like it. Any idea you have, send it to me. I, I'm, I'm right. to pick up something as well. Um, and I'm excited. Oh, I wanted to see, uh, is there anything, one thing that you want people to check out? I know I saw some, just some cool pictures. I know you're doing some like a new series. I saw you with a bunch of lights around you. And I've seen that a few, a, a couple of times, some really good photography. Really? Lights? Me? <laughs> you, oh, I mean, you're, you're, I don't, you're, I'm not you're, sure. You, you probably don't know I'm what, what you this, this year, this year, a lot of it is going to be um, mostly, uh, obviously, virtual, uh, unfortunately. And, um, but we still have a few uh, events that are going to be, actually, I was surprised because we really didn't want to push this. We wanted to have an off year where we would just, Keep it going, yeah. but um, Lily, um, our Lily Gindi, our program uh, uh, manager, basically informed me a couple of days ago, and that we have over a hundred. And uh, so you know, it's just and and literally without doing so much, uh, you know, pushing this uh, as much as we can. But this is our ninth year, so yeah. 2022 is going to be our tenth year. And that is when can you? I want this place completely lit, and we have to have. I want to have people. We have South by Southwest that yeah. could be, uh, you know, that is some some, you know, a kind of a. We should be a cerebral type of South by Southwest. I'm not saying it takes years and years to get to that level, but I think yeah. we can get. Maybe not. Some level. With, with we can the, as long as people start to come over. Yeah. To this environment. I want us to be prepared for them yeah. when they come. I want you and all the different folks in here who are doing so much work on the ground to say, okay, we will show you how guys where to pitch your tent. And this is this is Dream Week. And Dream Week has to be a place where we can come or at least attempt to resolve conflict every year. You know? I love it. And you know, because you think about what's going on right now, right? And the thing is. I think one thing that, <laughs> and I don't know if I'm gonna frame this correctly, but I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot because that's what I'm known for. Um, one thing that's a problem is that as humans, we kind of like to specialize. We like to specialize and then watch Netflix, right? It's like, I wanna do what I need to do and then watch Netflix. And so people are like, this whole conversation is going on. People don't know how to deal with it, but you know, we need a convention. We need an engine um, yeah. to, to solve this. That's gonna be running 24 seven. And you know, yeah. to have a place where people can come in, go through, where these issues can come in and go through and get processed. And it's such a big deal for, for the entire world that um, I, I think definitely there's so much, as far as like market drivers, I'm talking, you know, yeah. for something like this, there's definitely an abundance of- Yes. I mean, yeah. the, and just the fact that, you know, I mean, Texas it wasn't fashionable until South by Southwest, you know, and uh, I think um, City Limits, uh, Austin, uh, yeah, he, he, yeah, he said, um, you know, it wasn't really known. Uh, the Spurs is another huge driver outside of, but most people didn't even know. Most people in the world don't even know that the capital of the capital of Texas is in Austin. They have no, they have no idea. Dallas, Houston, you know, are well known cities outside of it. So I think it'll be very in in interesting to make this place this kind of uh, cerebral, quiet, 
uh, place at the beginning of every year where people, you know, at least we come and, you know, uh, think about how we're going to approach the, the you know, the, the upcoming year and do, do so in a way that we encourage each other to, you know, at least have our neighbors in mind when we think about doing things and how we, you know, how we operate. And it's not so difficult, you know. Um, I feel that our wealth re really, really relies, our true wealth as a community relies on how we allow everyone play their actual natural roles within it. Wow, yeah, exactly. And there's so much definition there. And I think reopening that up because sometimes it gets centralized by Instagram. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know what, I'm going to go on forever and we're going to be, we're going to be here six hours. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We got some when, I thought it was 10 o'clock in the morning. I, if I'd known it was 10 p.m., <laughs> I was like, whoa, really? <laughs> this is, <laughs> I had no idea, man. I was like, what? Can it's you got me on this yeah. one? But thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate yeah, sure. it. Yeah, sir. Thank you for being on it. You know, you guys, uh, if you're watching this, go to www.dreamweek.org. Oh, yes. Um, and, and it starts on the ten, um, the uh, 14th, 14th of January to the 24th. You still uh, have, if you have, um, um, if you have some time, you know, just go up there. We're still, you know, taking a few applications. I think it's going to be uh, closed by the end of the week or so. But if you have a wonderful idea for an event or you just want to present something online, let us know at dreamweek.org. Awesome. You guys do it. It's, it's an amazing resource. I couldn't believe that it existed. Um, thank you so much, show. Um, I, I'm, I, I take people's nicknames very fast, even if I'm used to their first name. So sh thank you so much. I appreciate it. This has been great. I'm sure I'm going to bring you, I hope I, I get to bring you back for another one. Um, okay. I Dream Week. We're going to do some cool stuff. All right, let me get out of here. I'm, I'm having so much fun here. I just want to like hang out. But <laughs> All Thank right. you, though. I really appreciate it. You know, yes. keep on doing all this wonderful work, okay? And uh, yes. let's talk soon, okay? Yep. Take care. All right. Bye. See you. See you guys.